Hey everybody, welcome to the Mana Leak. I'm John as always, and I just wanted to put together a quick video as there's been some interest in my mentions of using a hypergeometric calculator. Frequently when deciding on keeping a hand on MTGO or in set reviews, I'll mention how likely it is that you'll draw a certain number of lands for something like Gigantosaurus. Obviously this won't help you in the middle of a paper match, but it's a good little tool on MTGO or Arena. The tool I use specifically is at StatTrek.com, and the link will be in the show notes below. You could also just do a quick search for StatTrek Hypergeometric and it'll show up. What the calculator does is it determines the likelihood of you obtaining a specific number of successes in a population of items. In magic terms, the odds of you drawing a specific card from your deck in a certain number of draws. On the calculator, there's four numbers that you'll need to fill in. So let's say, for example, we're playing a 40 card deck. We're on the play. We drew our seven. We have two lands, a few three drops, and we want to know how likely it is that we'll hit our third land by turn three, because of course that hand does nothing if we don't hit that third land. So how likely are we to get that uh, third land? The first line, population size, is how big your deck currently is. At the start of the game, we had 40 cards, but we drew seven, so currently there are 33 cards in our deck. That's population size. The second line, number of successes in population, is how many hits there are. Let's say we have 17 lands in the deck. We drew two. That leaves us with 15 lands in the deck. And let's say that all we care about is drawing any land. We don't actually care about the color. So the number of successes in the population is 15. There's 15 lands that we could hit. Sample size is how many cards you'll be drawing. Assuming we're on the play by turn three, when we want to play those three drops, we'll have drawn two cards. So that's the sample size. Finally, the number of successes in the sample is the number that we want to draw. We want to draw one land, and so that's what we're going to put in. After hitting calculate, we had a whole bunch of numbers telling us the likelihood of drawing exactly that number of lands, less than that number of lands, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. Now, we actually don't care if we draw one land or if we draw two lands in those first two draws. They're both going to help our hand. So we're actually going to look at the greater than or equal to amount, since that's the likelihood of drawing one or two lands. At 71%, that's pretty decent odds. I would probably keep that hand. As a quick additional example, let's say our two lands were of one color, and we really, really, really needed to hit our second color as our third land in order to get those drops. If we had, say for example, eight sources of that color, we would change the number of successes to eight because of course they're all still in our deck, we didn't draw any. If we hit calculate, we see the odds of us drawing one or two of that color is only 43%. That's not great. I would probably mulligan. That is worse than a coin flip. Mulligans are typically where I'll use this the most often, but you can also use it to figure out things like the likelihood of you drawing your bomb in a certain number of turns, the odds of you hitting a certain card off of a draw three spell or things like that. Just remember the numbers you need are cards left in your deck, population size, how many hits are left in your deck, the number of successes in population, the number of cards you'll be drawing, the sample size, or potentially looking at. You could apply this to Vivian's Invocation or something like that. And finally, how many cards, how many of the hits you need to draw. Additionally, keep in mind that you'll typically be caring about the greater than or equal to line because you're probably fine drawing two of whatever it is you're looking for, uh, although one is kind of the bare minimum. So typically ignore the equals to one. Obviously, that's much lower in this case. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps some people out. Uh, this is a cool little tool. You don't need to know how the math behind it works. Uh, there's a bunch of formulas that I used to know but don't know anymore. So this calculator is very helpful. So uh, check that out. It's StatTrek.com, Hypergeometric Calculator. It's really useful uh, d for deciding some mulligans and things like that. Do not whip your phone out at an FNM or a GP. You cannot have an electronic device at the table and do something like this. This would be outside assistance. Um, but you can also memorize some of these easy uh, kind of percentages. You know, you can remember that on the or on the play, it's 71% that you will draw your third land by turn three or whatever. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitch. You can find me at Patreon. And you've already found me here. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button. Click subscribe if you want to see more. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.